Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. This video, I just wanted to talk about a few different methods of recon that will keep you more up to date with data and will hopefully avoid brute forcing. I can make a whole nother video on brute forcing. I'm not against brute forcing. These are just some methods that don't include brute forcing and don't include permutations and alterations and that kind of scanning. There's a time and a place for that. And if you want to do it, definitely go ahead. The reason why we don't necessarily do that all the time unless you really really want to is because you may try millions and millions of things and maybe just get one new thing and that one new thing is probably a really valuable asset whether it's a domain or a path or whatever you may be brute forcing or fuzzing it could be subdomains it could be paths it could be virtual hosts it could be anything it's worth doing it if you have the servers and you want to take the time and that kind of thing and you don't think you'll get blocked but it's a lot of work for very little results, but there's other ways other than just the common ones that people put out there that I think are a very good way to get more modern snapshots of the internet that also obviously include bug bounty targets. So those are some of the things we're gonna go over today. If you see me looking this way, it's because I have a notepad over here and I don't wanna miss any of the points that I wanna hit. So that's why I'm looking over here. But let's see what we got. So obviously the first one that we're just gonna go over quick that everyone I'm sure knows is there's it's always worth running subfinder so this is project discovery subfinder again the reason why I showed this page instead of the repository is you always want to make sure if you're gonna set up subfinder that you should go through their list of keys in their configuration file and set up anything that's at least free or anything that you also pay for your or, you know your company pays for if you're doing this for a company or whatever a lot of these have free tiers or free subscriptions I think buffer over might I think, I know Chaos does, I think DNSDB might, GitHub, something to keep in mind is to do GitHub correctly, you actually need to make about 10 to 15 GitHub accounts and get a token for each one, that way it will rotate through your accounts and do more because GitHub is very touchy about like how many times you hit it, so I'd recommend making a bunch of those, that's like a weird inside thing for just GitHub. Security trails you obviously have to pay for, but I think there's a free tier for that too. Shodan goes on sale every year, so I'd recommend getting it whenever it goes on sale every year and some of these other ones. But those are some of the main ones I use. Again, go through all these. Some of these either have free tiers or are just free in general. Use them. Add them. That way it gives you as much passive data as possible. And this is always just free to run on all your targets. It's passive, you might as well put it out there. We've talked about it on other automation videos. It costs you nothing to just create a cron job that runs Subfinder all the time, every day, once a day, once a week, whatever you may want against all your programs. And you can make it store the data, you can make it notify you of new domains, all that kind of stuff, however you want to get involved with it. But it's always worth hitting because it's just free passive data that other people are collected, have collected that you have access to. The next thing I want to talk about is all the stuff to do with SSL certs. So SSL and TLS certs are all over the internet, and most of them have CN and SAN records in them that will contain domain names. It doesn't have to contain domain names, but it can. It can contain wildcard domains, or it can contain like other junk, or it can contain domains. It can contain the domain of the actual domain name of the IP address that it's on, or it can contain a bunch of different vhost names, all that kind of stuff. You never really know. So there's a few different resources for this, and this is kind of a teaser into the next video I'm gonna make when it's a little bit further along because I'm not totally done with the tool yet. But the first thing to go over is if you just want the data, there's a group called Kafer Jaeger. I know they're active on Twitter. I actually haven't personally met any of them, but they seem really cool and they put out really cool stuff and really cool tooling but one of those things is if you go to their website that you can see up here on the left they have a bunch of different projects here they have cdn ranges that they update all the time they have ip ranges of cloud providers that they update all the time but right here this snn sni ip ranges is lists of cns and sans of all the ip ranges from their list here that gets updated daily so this is them basically going through and scanning all of the cloud right? So Google, Bing, Amazon, Microsoft, Oracle, DigitalOcean, all that stuff. And they say here that they do it daily. I don't actually pay attention if they do it or not, but I'm sure they do. And you can go here, just click in here and you can download any of the data you want. It's just a big text file. And that text file will have the certificate data and doesn't have the whole certificate. It just has the CN and SAN fields, which could house domains if they have them. And they just pull it and dump it and pull it and dump it. And that's all they do. 
Now again, it says here to me, the date of this video is like February 21st. It says here that it's February 5th. So that I'm not sure if that's like totally correct or not, but it says on the other page that they updated daily. It's at least semi-modern and you don't have to do the scanning, which is pretty amazing. But if you do want to do the scanning yourself, me and Jason Haddix made a tool called Cloud Recon. We actually did a DEF CON talk about it. I will link the DEF CON talk down in the description of the video if you want to watch the talk about the tool, how we came up with the tool, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to be updating a little bit here. There's actually some pull requests that I saw come in that actually are really interesting, and I will update them. I think one adds like JSON output, which I was going to do anyway, so that's really awesome of some people to contribute. And I think there's another one with the database functionality, but I would go through it, look through it. The basics that of what this does is it will just do basically the same thing. It's just a tool to do that yourself if you want to go and do it yourself. So you can hand it an IP range of either the IP ranges that you get from here. You can go back and use k for Jaegers if you want to and use their IP ranges of all the clouds. Or you could do it across the whole internet or you could do it on a certain IP range of a target that you know or an ASN that you know and all that kind of stuff. And it will just go and pull all of the CN and SAN data by doing half of an SSL connection. You can tell it what ports. I normally run it on port 443, but there are other SSL TLS ports out there that you can run it on and try and pull certificate data from. I'm looking for web hosts, so I run it on web host ports because that's what I'm looking for. But if you really want to do thorough recon, you can do it on more ports if you want to. It runs really, really fast. On like a $40 digital ocean box, I can normally do all of the cloud ranges in a couple hours and the whole internet in one to two days, something like that, depending on how fast the concurrency is set and all that kind of stuff. But this is the tool if you want the data for yourself and you want to continuously grab that data for yourself so you know it's up to date and you know you're the one grabbing it, this is the tool that I use and that we built together and talked about at DEF CON. It works great. I still use it all the time. The next thing is this type of a tool will grab any certificate. It'll connect to port 443 if that's the port you're looking on and it will pull the certificate even if it's a self-signed cert, all that stuff. So there's another thing called certificate transparency logs, which of course the first thing everyone thinks about is cert.sh, which is actually pulling in all those certificates and you can query that database and all that kind of stuff. But it obviously has rolling updates as well. And the thing about that is that certificate authorities are posting new certificates to that CT log constantly all day, every day, all the time. Those logs are being updated. And those are actually public, which is how cert.sh gets it. And you can query those CT logs too, and you can actually monitor those. So there used to be a tool for this called CertStream that just, that's all it did was like it, it monitored these CT logs and just printed out all the new certificates, like as they got published to the CT logs, it just like constant stream of them. And you could either grep them or save them or whatever. Um, for me, the tool doesn't work anymore. It doesn't seem to work anymore. And none of the libraries that they created seem to work anymore. It seems like it's dead. So I actually recreated it using, so uh, Google actually has some open source libraries to like do a lot of this stuff and like query the logs and do all that kind of stuff. So I actually used some of their, their libraries and recreated CertStream basically as my own tool that I'm finishing and I'm gonna hopefully show you guys next video. There's just a little bit, a few kinks to work out so that it can just be a constant running thing and it'll run in the background and you can then just like grep against that stream of certificates. Similar to how Tom Nom Nom's GF tool is like grep patterns. You can use grep patterns, a whole list of grep patterns for like all of the domains that you're hunting on or all of the domains of any bug bounty program anywhere. And you can just have a constant alerting system of when a new certificate with a domain or a domain from a certificate that got posted to the CT logs is posted and you can know right away. And that could tell you of when there's a brand new asset that just got put on the public internet or was put on the public internet a while ago. So it's something to keep in mind, but you can you can still constantly, if you want to like constantly query cert.sh, I'm not sure how often it's updated, but it's obviously not instantaneous. Uh, you can try and check out CertStream, but I'm pretty sure it's dead. And again, hopefully I'll be releasing a new tool here to work on some of that stuff. So it's just like a constant stream of all the new certificates getting posted to CT logs every day. And then you can grab pattern against it and see if there's anything that you have interest in. So that's also another thing. So there's SSL certs, just scanning them with Cloud Recon or using K-Frieger data that will include self-signed certs as well as CA authorities. But the other one that you can use 
or the other technique that you can use is actually just using uh, a tool like ZDNS to just reverse DNS the entire internet. That's actually what the tool was used for. There's, it was created by you know the same people who made ZMap, which is over here. So again, if you wanted to use Cloud Recon to scan SSL certs on port 443, it is very fast, but ZMap is also really fast. It's pretty much a contender to mass scan. Um, I like ZMap a little bit more actually, personally, for like mass port scanning, and it's very good. So what I've done in the past to actually make it easier when I'm doing really, really wide scans is I actually ZMap scan for port 443 being open because this is even faster than Cloud Recon. I mean, it's like was built by people way smarter than me for speed. So I will scan actually whatever range for port 443 and then those IPs will actually be what I throw into Cloud Recon and that way I guarantee that I'm not just like shooting dead commands. But ZDNS is the tool that basically the same thing for DNS. So you can do all kinds of lookups. You can do A lookups and NS lookups and all that kind of stuff. But in the documentation, which again, I won't, you can go look for yourself. It's down here. But down here somewhere, they talk about uh, reverse DNS. Again, there's more documentation than this. I think there's like a whole nother page of documentation if you want it. Um, and there's a paper on it too. Like I said, in the paper, they talk about reverse DNS and they use this tool to just reverse DNS the entire internet. So you can just hand it reverse DNS, which basically looks for PTR records. And those PTR records are what it sounds like. Reverse DNS is what it sounds like. So instead of domain name to IP, it's IP to domain name. And it will give you any PTR records that basically will regurgitate domain names. So you can do that across the whole IP space or across the cloud IP space, or if certain targets give you site ranges, you can do it across those site ranges and you can do it again every day, every hour, every whatever you wanna do and alert for new domains. And you can use that to get a constant up-to-date snapshot of the state of their IP space, whatever IP space it may be. The last one I'm gonna talk about is if you're doing crawling anyway with a tool like Katana, and again, there's the repo here and then they have their whole like write-up with everything and they have a bunch of articles you can look at and there's like usage instructions down here um, and I know a bunch of people made videos and blogs I actually wrote one of the blogs for project discovery on Katana and the usage but if you're crawling a lot of the times you're going to come across new domains anyway so that's also something to look for is either while you're crawling looking for new domains and also while you're crawling or while you're just crawling anything if you hit HTTP redirect sometimes those domains are new as well so that's something to keep in mind and don't just, you know, flip over those or don't stop the crawler to only be on the domain you're on. Probably if you're going to crawl, it's a good idea to maybe keep it to a keyword or something like that. That way you may catch new domains as well. And then to be on the lookout for those and alert those and all that kind of stuff. So why I bring these up, that's really it. Why I bring these up is because there's a lot of way, even passive stuff like we talked about with StubFinder. You have no idea how old it is. Some of the stuff isn't up anymore or hasn't been up forever or whatever. And brute forcing is fine. DNS brute forcing, vhost brute forcing, all that stuff is good. But some of these methods can actually aid you in doing that. For instance, all the stuff with certificates. If you pull a certificate that has eight domain names on it, though all those eight domains might just be vhosted on the IP address that you pulled the certificate from. So it's probably a good idea to turn around and do some vhost brute forcing, but with only those eight certificate domains that you just pulled. You have a much higher likelihood of doing some kind of technique like that rather than just shooting 5,000 domains at a vhost brute forcer at every IP you see. It's gonna take forever, you might get banned, all that kind of stuff. It's just something, this is also something that will give you an actual up-to-date snapshot of the internet. So if you're looking mass internet for assets belonging to any bug bounty program, some of these things are just easy wins. They're not easy wins as in you get the bounty, but the whole point of recon is to find assets to attack. And these are some things that everyone out there who's running SubFinder, you can, when they say beat them to assets and you see other people making videos or doing talks or whatever about how they beat people to assets, these are some of the ways that they do that. They're consistently looking for new certificates coming up that have new domains in them, or they're consistently reverse DNSing the whole internet. This is literally, if anyone has you know, been around when Project Discovery, or not Project Discovery, when Rapid7 had their data set out there, Project Sonar, 
Now you can't get it unless you're researching or you pay for the product or whatever. But this is how they did it, is they just pulled certificates, they reversed DNS the internet, they did HTTP redirects, all the stuff, like it's just getting out there and using compute power that isn't that expensive to get nowadays to actually go to work for you and watch what's happening on the public internet. It's hard to do this, some of this stuff across the whole IPv6 space. I know there are some companies out there that attempt to do it, but as a bounty hunter with resources that you can get on DigitalOcean or Linode or some of these, or even just like something in your basement, it's not that hard to track the whole IPv4 space nowadays. Again, do it with a certain morality and with some moderation. Should you beat the crap out of every server you come across? No, you're gonna get abuse complaints, you're gonna get banned, you're gonna get stuff like that. But all these tools have rate limiting and you can set how many packets are sent and all this kind of stuff so that it's very low key traffic. It's You're not dosing anyone, you're not doing any of that stuff. So some of these things I would just recommend to look into if that's something you're interested in and doing some like high end recon and taking like more public snapshots of the IPv4 space or of like the internet as a whole and just taking inventory of what's out there for you to hack obviously legally but anyway that's all i got for this video again we can still talk about brute forcing if that's something you want to do i try and avoid brute forcing just because it's again a lot of effort for very few findings again the very few findings are amazing but there's still very few so if this is something that's interested to you check it out let me know what you find with it and for now 